It's Monday. We're here. Social distancing. We are social distancing. <laughs> uh, Jess and I have constructed a wall between us, a wall of uh, toilet paper and hand sanitizer and other cleaning products that we definitely didn't steal from the supply room here at the district office. Um, so, uh, big stuff happened uh, last week. A lot of... Uh, a lot of big news, a lot of big announcements, news, decision, uh, decisions were made, postponements happened, and then uh, a lot of other stuff uh, just in our nation right now going on uh, yeah. with Corona, with COVID-19. So you, know you guys are making those same calls, same decisions. You're, yeah, we're all in the same boat together yep. on this one. So a couple big things, um, you know, since the last time we did a Monday Motivation, uh, we published a video on Thursday night um, about the postponement of youth convention. And, uh, you know, Lee, if you haven't seen the video, go watch that video. Um, yeah, it's on Lee this really page. unpacks the, the kind of the reason why the heart behind, um, you know, and this was kind of before the, the national, the White House live stream on Friday. Uh, things, I feel like the Annie's been upped a little bit. Yeah, since, before the CDC, like, yeah. their recommendation is 50 people now for the next eight weeks, which would definitely be over youth conventions. So, yeah, so um, just... Yeah, Watch it. The, the right call was made. Uh, it was a wild couple days here. But we have a couple announcements we're going to get to about that, about uh, Bible quiz, about district fine arts, about a bunch of other stuff. And then we're going to talk today uh, about what you can do right now as a youth pastor, how you can do youth ministry. Before we get into that, let's uh, let's celebrate a little bit. We got to do okay. we get some birthdays? birthdays. Yeah, we do. Today, birthdays today, Monday is Michelle Campbell's Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Michelle. Happy birthday, Michelle. Michelle is uh, part of our fine arts coordination team. She's awesome. And yeah. she's also uh, kind of been keeping us in the loop, you know, leading yeah. up to uh, all this happening. With, she's a director with of Corona. hospice, so she's been on all the CDC calls. She and knows all that what's up. Stuff. She, knows she knows what's, what's going on. And then uh, Thursday, we got uh, David Simonetti. Happy birthday, Happy David. Happy birthday, David, on Thursday. Uh, and Sunday is Pam Ripple. Happy birthday, yeah. Pam. Yeah. So those are the birthdays. We've got some new members. Uh, Jesse, we go through that list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nate Lease, Nicole Cotter, Gabriel Smallwood, and um, Dan Santos. Welcome, Welcome. to the Not group. Happy Not happy Welcome. birthday. Welcome. Happy you joined our group today. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the group. So, Welcome, guys. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. Um, let's talk about youth convention because that's okay, the big one. Cool. Okay, yeah. so. We know there's still lots of questions out there surrounding youth convention. There's still uh, some questions here as well. We're going to be honest with you. We're still working things out. Um, this has never happened before, right? So it's a little bit of a process, just um, letting the dust settle and then figuring out what we're going to do moving forward. So thank you guys so much for your patience with us. Thank you for not bombarding us with phone calls uh, the past couple of days. That really has been crucially helpful to uh, just helping us move forward and process what we need to do. Next, we are anticipating that this week uh, we're going to be calling everybody who has registered for convention and we're going to be giving you the option of either refunding uh, your tickets, you can donate that towards the big give, or you can uh, just tell us to keep that money for now and we'll apply that to either youth camp or to youth convention uh, when we release the details of when it's going to happen this year. So uh, yeah. we're hoping to have some answers about that as well. Like. Uh, maybe some location, maybe time frame. We're thinking the fall of this year for youth convention. So, um, but we'll have definitely more details on that. Hopefully, when we give you a call this week. Yeah, like you said, to process it. nothing is set in stone as of now. But we are working really hard to make youth convention happen this this yeah. calendar year. Still. Right. So yeah. Right. Um, and uh, move right in then. Attached to youth convention, district fine arts. Uh, a lot of changes. District yeah. fine arts. Uh, we are over right 50, now. Right? There's over 50 yeah. attending district fine arts. So per the CDC recommendation, um, we are working on a system right now that will allow district fine arts to happen through digital submission. So uh, that's another big undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a lot of you know nuts and bolts that go into that, but ultimately it's going to be use the honor system. Send one edited clip, and we're we're we'll working through the details of that. Yeah, stuff. that's so the is, national office is working on that. Lots of other districts are yeah. headed in the same direction. So, so this isn't just uh, a Pendel no, conversation. This, yeah, is a this is a national bigger conversation. conversation than that. So. Yeah, yep. and then of course uh, this weekend, uh, district Bible quiz is scheduled. So if you are scheduled, uh, you're registered for district Bible quiz finals this weekend. Uh, we're going to be looking to Bernie Elliott, Pastor Bernie, uh, and his leadership on that. 
Pastor Bernie will be sending you an email uh, to whoever the group leader is that registered. So be on the lookout for that and you'll get an update on how it's going to be reworked, what we're going to do to make it happen, like what the details are about that. So that's just, again, all these things are in process. We're figuring it out as we go. Uh, so, you know, just work with us. And uh, we really do appreciate the patience as we try yes. to figure out the best solution uh, for everybody. Yeah. So, okay, let's Sounds just jump good. right into it. Get into it. Um, yeah. So the CDC recommended for the next eight weeks uh, that no gatherings of 50 or more uh, happen it's for the next eight weeks. And that's a long period of time. Two months? Uh, it's two months. And so a lot of major events are wrapped in that. A lot of church services are wrapped in that. Uh, I'm sure your youth ministry gatherings, you might not have a youth ministry that's uh, over 50, but your church might have decided over the weekend or the next week, the church might make the decision that they're not going to have any gatherings. Or the, um, yeah, the church gathering on whatever night you meet is over. Yeah, so, so you might be part of this conversation now. You might be part of this conversation soon. You might not be part of this conversation at all. I'm not sure what your specific leadership is telling you to do, um, but we're going to go and we're just going to talk about a couple ways uh, to not lose momentum in youth ministry in a time like this. So um, there are a lot of social platforms, online platforms to connect with your students. I guarantee you, your students are already on them. And some of you watching might have might be, you know, for the last couple months, years, been going, oh, I really got to get better at Instagram, or I really, I really got to learn how to use Facebook, you know, videos, or I really got to, I, man, I got to start a, we got to start that YouTube page. Or uh, re more recently, you might be saying like, man, I've really got to figure out TikTok, <laughs> right? Now's your chance. <laughs> you got plenty of time. If you've been putting it off, <laughs> if you've been, you know, if social media or online platforms have been something that has been like, just kind of this like back burner off in the distance, you know, uh, we'll get to it one day, get to it. This is yeah. your time to get to it. So there are a lot of innovative ways to use it. There are a lot of ways to use it uh, to share the gospel. There are a lot of ways to use it to engage with your student body that you already have. And we're going to go through some of the nuts and bolts of that. We're going to go through um, some of the do's and don'ts, some of my recommendations, take them or don't, um, of just how to, how to do it, how to do it well. So let's talk about this stream right now. We go live to a Facebook group every Monday morning. Yep. And then we publish that video to uh, YouTube. We publish it to a podcast uh, platform that gets it, you know, everywhere you can listen to it. So if you're not listening or not subscribed, go subscribe because you should check it out. And we're recording with a phone. We're right? recording we this with a phone. Set up. Since we're not day in the one, studio. yeah. We're since day one, we've been going live with a phone. phone. Yep. We have a ring light that we bought that holds the phone. This is like the light that like YouTube makeup tutorial girls use, and we bought it because it's on a stand. It's easy. It holds the phone. We have a little microphone. Um, so you might not even have that before we had this, we started just trying to find the good light in the room. Yeah. Sometimes usually that means like propping your phone up against the window. So the natural light is coming in. Um, there's a lot of, you know, kind of little tricks and hacks. Maybe it means, you know, taking the lampshade off your lamp or something in your room. Uh, there are ways to get good light, but, um, we don't have like a, a million dollar setup to do mm -hmm. this. We're just using a platform, Facebook live in a group. That's where our community happens takes place in the comments. You know, we're seeing comments rolling even as we're doing this stream. Um, so that might be the simplest solution for you is just to use the platform you already have and your phone. Now, one great post I saw over the weekend, Nia Jalot posted a really in-depth questions, ideas, what she's doing, uh, what her and uh, Chris Jalot are doing in their youth ministry in Ben Salem. So I want to address that. One thing uh, Nia was asking was uh, which platform is best, right? So like, my students, some of them aren't on YouTube, uh, some of them aren't on Facebook, some of them aren't on Instagram. What do I do? What platform is best? Here's my recommendation. All. Use, use them all. If you have multiple phones, set them up next to each other and go live on multiple platforms if you can. Yeah. Uh, Instagram Story Live is a great way to get you know, yourself right in the palms of students' hands who are on Instagram all day, every day. Facebook Live is a great way to catch Maybe some of the parents and students that are still using Facebook. Students aren't really using Facebook as much as parents and grandparents are. Um, and then my recommendation, too, is go for YouTube. Go for YouTube hard. And here's why. You don't need an account to access content on YouTube. So as long as your students uh, don't have, like, uh, YouTube blocked on their phone, their parents didn't lock it down with some kind of parental controls, you don't need any kind of login to get to YouTube. Now... That's true. 
you need a certain uh, subscriber count to to get to live streaming. I don't actually I'm not sure what that subscriber count is right now because they keep changing. Um, you'd need a certain su a subscriber count to get to live streaming. But I would I would even say like, can you pre-record and can you publish to these platforms? IGTV, Instagram TV, it, you can publish long form videos to IGTV and they don't need to be vertical. Same thing with Facebook, you can publish long form videos to Facebook, uh, Facebook video. Same thing with YouTube, you can publish long form videos to YouTube. Now that doesn't mean like editing these like super cool vlogs or like super cool YouTube videos. That just means doing whatever you're gonna do, trimming the beginning and the end, which your camera app can trim video, and then publishing it. You don't need to go to a computer and editing suite. I mean, you can if you want. If you want to edit in sermon graphics or if you have a student in your youth ministry who's really great with that stuff, and you, know, you can do right that. And off school, yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of students off school. You can do that. You don't necessarily have to. So just kind of looking at that, you know, you, you make the decision in your context of what's going to work best and do you have the support team behind the camera to make it work. Um, there are so much more risks with live streaming than there are with uh, pre-recorded messages. So with live streaming, you've seen us on Mondays. Sometimes we're sideways. Sometimes <laughs> the audio doesn't work. Sometimes we bring in a guest and the whole thing falls apart. True. And that's just the risk that we run. Yeah. Even right now, Jess and I are on camera. Uh, Brandon, our communications director for Pendel, is off camera right now monitoring comments, making sure the video is still going, making sure things are all working, uh, listening to the audio to make sure it's good. Um, so there are a lot of other risks with live streaming if you want to do it in this like professional kind of ish context. If you just want to do something like go live to your phone walking around with headphones in and it's more casual, students are used to that. Yeah, they see that all the time. They see it's it all weird. the time. You don't necessarily need to put your service that happens on a Wednesday or Sunday night or whenever you meet with youth, you don't necessarily have to just put that in the social box. You could do something entirely different in the time where you're not meeting and gathering. Yeah, let this be permission to yeah. be creative. Be let creative be and be fun. So like, here's an idea have a spouse or friend or leader drive you around while you're live streaming to Instagram. Don't drive and live Don't stream. Don't drive and live stream <laughs> at the same time. Have someone drive you. By the way, uh, video sounds amazing in a car. Uh, it always sounds great in a car because the acoustics of all the seats, like if you need a place to shoot, shoot in a car. <laughs> anyway, um, drive around, maybe while it's still like sunny out, maybe even during the day, and like pick one or two students and you're going to go to their house and you're going to do like drive through like a drive through game with them give away a roll of toilet paper like be if it's youth ministry it. have fun <laughs> be silly like you know if you can find exactly if you can find toilet paper but like so maybe maybe you take it to them on a one to one basis maybe yeah. you go ask them a question or you go do an interview with your students and now you're creating a culture over the next couple days or the next two weeks if your students are off of school of like oh whose house are they going to next you know that right. kind of stuff um one thing I saw that's super awesome this weekend, uh, I want to shout out to um, Gil and Dave at Allison Park Church. Uh, they started a Minecraft server for their students. So if you don't know, Minecraft was like really cool like six or seven years ago, really popular in the gaming community, kind of died off, and then the last year it came back in a big way. Well, they started a Minecraft server, and then they published the details, and so their students, they're just hanging out in virtual space with their students. Yeah. And that, what that does is that creates not just a one-to-many communication platform, you know, like this, like, yeah. you can only talk back to us if we look at the comments, right? That creates a space where they're just walking around and hanging out with their students, but practicing the social distancing. <laughs> so, like, maybe it's time to think through and find a way to be creative, you know? Yeah. Um, Another thing, and I know I'm, it's info dump right now, but another thing is I would caution you not to feel like you need to uh, learn all the cultures of the platform that you're using. You can just be you on a new platform. So when I said, like, why not all of them? TikTok, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Why not all of them? I'm saying that because I'm, I'm saying why not cast your net as wide as you can for your students to engage with you. But don't let it be overwhelming. Don't let it be overwhelming. Don't get stuck in, you know, analysis paralysis. Don't overthink just because I'm on this platform, I need to adhere to all of the, maybe like the trends of this platform. So here's an example, like TikTok. I got an account in January. I'm not posting. I'm just watching. I'm trying to learn it. I'm really just trying to like understand this platform. Yeah. You said you just got an account over the just weekend, weekend. Just so you can like and watch videos, yeah. right? And they kind of learn you a little bit. So 
after liking and whatever video, the my for you page on TikTok is not like people doing like dances in like double time, like most of like what you think TikTok is, right? My for you page is actually like people playing old video game music on like marimbas and saxophones. It's, it's just cat like it, no, it's not cat videos, <laughs> but like well, there are some cat videos, but like <laughs> so it's 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 like the stuff that I've engaged with, right? So TikTok is more than just like the e girl like dancing like in double time to some song or quoting something. So you don't. What I'm saying is you don't need to try to be that. You don't need to go, oh, man, well, if I start a TikTok account, that means i got to learn all these dances. Dance. <laughs> you don't have to learn the dances <laughs> to use the platform. Just use the platform and be you. Just, right? Just go and Let's be you. So, like, if, Jess, if your church said, hey, we're not doing any more meetings for the next eight weeks, and you started, you know, you jumped in on all these platforms that you're, you know, not yeah. currently using, what, like, what would you do? Like, what... You know, as a youth pastor, small church, what like what kind of stuff are you? Are you going and are you gonna like start? Are we gonna see you dancing on TikTok? You will not see. Are we gonna see you dancing on TikTok? So like what like what um, kind of thing? Like what would that look I like? I think for you? TikTok is great for like short devotions. I've mm. seen uh, pastors, youth pastors, do like daily devotions just real quick. Uh, I think that's great. Um, also, utilize your students. Like seriously, they're off school for the next two weeks at least. Um, so utilize them if. You have a great worship leader. I know that's something you were talking about, Mark. Like, if you have a, a great worship leader, pre-record them doing a couple of songs, Spotify playlists. Mm. Um, there's lots of things that we can do that we don't have to lose our influence because we're being cringy. Weird and cringy. cringy. Don't be cringy. <laughs> don't you be can, cringy. You can join the platforms without being cringy. That's and true. That's, I think that's a really probably important if that's the takeaway if that's the takeaway please, take that away please. don't be yeah. cringy <laughs> but play to your, so that means like play to your strengths yeah you know? play to who you are um david helmstadter is on tiktok he's not doing dances he's i think and david correct me if i'm wrong but i think there's like leaders like who are like helping run the platform with you yeah i think it's awesome when i see david on tiktok i'm like this guy is on tiktok he is crushing it like yeah. it's amazing and like his students you know they seem to love it they it seems to get great engagement like that's awesome um so like if you are if you don't feel like you have ever fit in that mold and that's why you've avoided social now's your time now's your time to just jump right in on it um and so you know i think those are some of the nuts and bolts of it you know like find good lighting, get the phone close to you, get the camera close to you. If your church has a streaming platform already and you can utilize it, by all means, utilize it. Yeah. I just know that, like, you know, that takes people and volunteers and staff, so you might not actually have access to that. Um, but, so now let's talk about the content of what we're talking about. So, I feel like every church live streamed on Sunday. I'm surprised Facebook didn't too. crash. <laughs> and I feel like every church's uh, message was... Uh, about fear and faith, do right? Do not be afraid. A lot of Isaiah being preached on Sunday morning. So that's week one, right? This is this all is happening. We have a responsibility to help people through it. You know, national the crisis, initial the initial yeah. shock. Uh, as a pastor, Jess, what is next? What's next? So we mitigated yeah. fear. We helped <clears throat> to mitigate fear in week one. What do we do now? Yeah, I think that's good. I think we can't get stuck there. I mean, we can't preach, do not be afraid for the next eight weeks. We can, but we're not going to be relevant. We're not going to be helping um, those that we're called to help. I think that the church um, has been given a mission to love people, right? The Bible says that um, the world will know that we are disciples because of the way that we love each other. And I think that in times like this, we saw it right after 9-11. We're seeing it again now. We had a ton of visitors. We have a small church. We were well under the 250, so we met on Sunday. Um, and we had a ton of community visitors because people are uncertain. And I think that we need to take advantage of that. Um, we need to move past the fear into the outreach. And how can we be missional? How can we use this opportunity to be missional? Because the... Um, the mission of the church hasn't changed, but our opportunity to serve and love people has drastically changed in the last couple of weeks. It's increased in the amount of availability that we have. It's, uh, the people around us, our communities, are more receptive to us being loving and serving them. Uh, they're going to accept that when maybe they wouldn't have before. So I think that uh, we need to take that challenge ourselves. I know I've been incredibly challenged by that. I read something uh, this morning on um, Facebook that said that um, the church 
ha right, the church has a mission to reach other people, and I think that in America, we rely on meeting once or twice a week as a church, and we call that church, but when we take that away and we can't meet anymore in those um, cooperative settings, if we're not doing anything and if we aren't still the church, then were we the church in the first place? I think that we need to find creative ways to still be the church, even if we're not meeting on Sundays and Wednesdays. So we need to get over that and uh, process that, wrestle with that ourselves. And then we also have the responsibility as leaders to pass that on to our students. How are we challenging them to do the same thing, mm. to serve and love others, to serve and love the community, to be missional in a time where the world needs hope? Yeah. Your students um, potentially have two weeks, right, of maybe nothing to do, you know, once yeah. their at-home assignments are done or whatever that looks like. So um, they're going to be looking for what to do. And yeah. so they can waste their time. And they they'll can, find stuff to waste they will time find, <laughs> There are plenty of ways to waste time, right? Yeah. Like I, this weekend, I had a conference. I was going to be at Lead the Generation Conference. It got postponed. Yeah. I did nothing all weekend. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with myself. I did Challenge nothing all weekend. Challenge your students to not be like Mark. But you, yeah, <laughs> thank you. You can't, they, you can't go for two weeks like that. You can't. You know? and so, it's not healthy. It's not healthy. But... Not only is, like, what are they doing? Yeah. Because they're going to do something. So what Challenge them. Challenge them. Challenge them. So what, like, what does that look like, uh, I guess, like, in in terms of, like, just kind of being the hands and feet? Like, what, what are some ways we can challenge our students? Yeah, I mean, I think that looks different in every context. You know your community better than we do. Mm -hmm. um, I think that one way... We're going, hopefully going on a missions trip this summer, and um, I challenged our students who are in high school, sen uh, juniors and seniors, to offer to babysit, right? There's a lot of elementary school kids who are off right now, yeah. a lot of parents that are still working. Yeah. Um, babysit, ask, go to your neighbors who are elderly, ask them if you can go to the grocery store for yeah. them. Just super practical ways. Um, just look for just opportunities. Just use hand sanitizer before use you deliver hand sanitizer. Oh, I saw. Yeah. I saw. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, use wisdom, but still uh, look for areas and ways that you can serve yeah. your community. There's there's tons of ways. And you can be the organizer of that. You know, yeah. you, you and the way that you utilize the, the platforms that you have to communicate with your students, you can be the organizer of that. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those are a couple, um, a couple of ways. I'm going to turn post notifications on for this video. So if you have any questions, specifics, let's get into the nitty gritty. Please leave a comment. Um, if you know, if you can, if you, if you can leave a comment versus messaging me that way, if we have an answer or just everybody can see, everyone it. Can see it, we can have a discussion. That's awesome. We want to do that. Um, and so I'm going to end, I'm just going to echo what Lee, uh, the scripture that Lee referenced in his video. Um, Philippians 4, 4 through 9, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Friends, we have an opportunity to help our students through a moment like this, yeah. but we can't just stop there, right. right? We have an opportunity to help them help others through a moment like this. In times you know, of crisis, people are looking for answers, yeah. and people in times of uncertainty, people are looking for peace, and they're looking for a peace that you know, God can provide. So uh, let's engage with our students. Let's find new ways. And if you got some cool new ideas, share them. Share them in the group. Yeah. Uh, you know, If anything, this Facebook group should be more active uh, during this time with new resources and ideas popping right. up. Um, yeah. So Jess, will you pray? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Dear Jesus, we just uh, thank you for the hope that we have in you, God. We thank you that um, we have sure footing in a time that seems uncertain, God. And we just ask that you help us to process that in our own lives, God. And then as we lead the students that you've given us the responsibility to disciple, dear Jesus, I just ask that you help us to disciple them well. I ask that you help. I just ask that you help us to challenge them Help us to challenge them to be missional, God. I just ask that we look back at this time not as a time of fear and uncertainty, but we look back at this time as a catalyst to just really um, change what we're mm -hmm. doing in ministry to be more effective to the communities that we're called to reach, God. And I just ask that you help us to allow students to be part of that. I just ask that you help us to challenge them to be a part of that, dear Jesus. I just ask that you bless each leader that's listening now, each leader that isn't, dear Jesus. I just ask that you be with them and help them to be effective in the 
the context that you've called them to. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, we believe in you. That's right. We're praying for you. Have a great week, guys. Yeah.